Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Three Up Moon live stream, everybody. Happy Thursday. Good morning. It is Thursday, October 27th. It is Halloween week, and I hope you're having a good Thursday, a good autumn, and a good Halloween season. We are basically going to continue with spooky and horror and Halloween themed games all the way up until Halloween. And when we hit 800 followers, which we're really close to, I think we're 11 or 10 away or so, um, we will also be playing Eight Eyes on the NES, which is a fantasy horror game. But the way this series works is you can spin the wheel anytime you like for 420 Moonstones, and whatever game we get, I have to play. This is episode 44 of the spooky horror and Halloween themed retro roulette. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can go back and check out all the previous episodes. You can check out some of the other themed wheels. And if you're watching live on Twitch, you can spin that wheel, whatever we get. I have to stop what I'm doing and dive in. Our initial spin today gets us Castlevania Legends. And Castlevania Legends is an interesting one because it notoriously has some really rough uh, I guess I would say rough controls. There is like a sort of responsiveness that is missing in the original game. Um, so this is, we're actually playing a mod that adjusts the speed and the controls a little bit of the main character. Who canonically is actually the first of the Belmont clan to take on Dracula. It wasn't Simon. They have actually, I think, erased this from canon at this point, but... This is a, it's a pretty fun game. It's pretty decent, considering the limitations of the Game Boy at the time, but this is 1997, so at this point, the Game Boy Color was either right around the corner or existed. But stick around, it won't be long. Castlevania Legends, up next.
Hey, Sneaky Snakey Hog Arthamal, welcome in. It's been a while. Hope you're doing well. You're a bit early today? Oh, I'm a bit late today than usual, so. Normally on Wednesdays and Thursdays, uh, more recently with my new job, I've been, they're my Saturday, Sunday, so I've been streaming around 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, but usually it's, uh, usually it's around 4 or 5, or more in the evening every other day. You're doing good? You've been taking care of your pets? Awesome. Yeah, we did a big plant care thing the other day with all of our plant zone plants. <laughs> nice. Glad to hear you're doing good. We are doing a uh, horror and Halloween themed stream, so we're going to dive into the Game Boy Castlevania Legends. I'm looking this up here, I think. This game was released on the, like, Wii... Uh, there was, like, the Wii Virtual Console games, but there was, like, exclusive games that were made just for the Wii Virtual Console. I think one of them was a remake of A Boy in His Blob, which was an old NES game. And another one was a remake of Castlevania. It was either a remake of Castlevania Legends or Castlevania The Adventure. But we'll have to see. I'm going to do a deep dive on that. Some, uh... A lot of those games actually are kind of just lost to time. And they're not physicalized, and they're just a digital release only. And the system is now defunct, or they don't have that shop open anymore. You just can't get them anymore. If you don't already have it. Uh, the remake was Adventure? Okay, cool. So it wasn't this one. <clears throat> Let's see a few more people popping in. Welcome in, Zombie Paper. This music. I'm just really happy that everyone's shown up for the stream today. <laughs> it makes me so emotional. If this is your ringtone and you had you had to you were compelled to let the whole thing play before you answered <laughs> oh yeah this is normal Johnny usually lets it ring 36 37 times before he picks up I wonder why he must really like his ringtone Still going. Uh, hello? Yeah, Johnny, I've been trying to call you for like... It's been ringing for like 15 minutes. What the hell? Oh, sorry, I just listened to my ringtone. I'm outside. Okay, I'll be right there. Constantly late for everything. <laughs> How did you make that sound? What sound? What sound? Here we go, folks. You should be able to hear it. I don't want it to be too loud, but let me know if I need to adjust the sound that I make. It's 1997. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, the me crying because people are joining sound. Oh, uh, that was actually pre-recorded. Have you ever heard of the yak backs before? I've actually got an entire closet of... It's a yak back collection. And so I have pre-recorded sounds on each yak back. It's hard, though. There's a giant binder. I've got thousands of yak backs, so there's a giant binder kind of like going through a corporate karaoke book uh, and everything's itemized and super organized but uh, the index of sound effects is really hard to flip through really quickly but I was I've, I've got it down after doing that for for years after collecting all those yak backs I also have a room that's just the yak backs that let you play them backwards <laughs> what a hilarious gimmick for a toy none of that is true by the way um, what a hilarious gimmick for a toy, though. It just lets you record, like, I, I want to say, like, four seconds. I think Wave Recorder lets you record for longer on, like, Windows 98, <laughs> or Sound Recorder does. 
but it lets you record for like a split second and then play something back in super super low quality <laughs> Transylvania here we go oh, so the orb acts as the whip upgrade and you know what consider just considering the limitations of the Game Boy they didn't do a terrible job of this from a discount rack back in 1998 or so, and holy crap, it's expensive now. <clears throat> yeah, so you got it like a year after it came out. I mean, what it does well is it tries to bring in as much as it can from like Symphony of the Night. Because I feel like, did Symphony of the Night come out before this? It's triple digits, yikes. Yeah, d did Symphony of the Night come out before this? Or was it the same year? I feel like there's some elements of the newer games that they have going on in this. This was after Symphony of the Night? Same year. Same year it came out. Yeah, there was something... Something was compelling me uh, to remember that Symphony of the Night came out the year after Mario 64. <clears throat> you know what? We haven't done a Mario 64 randomizer in a while. That could be fun to do. I would not be opposed to that at all. We do have an ongoing playthrough of Circle of the Moon going, um, but we'll just progress through that if we get it uh, in the wheel spin. I think we're like 50% through. Symphony of the Night was 96 or something. It could be maybe the Japanese release. Or... Oh. Candle meat. Get that candle meat. Don't forget the meat. Because you need to eat meat to survive this game. Meat. You can't be a vegan and play Castlevania. Sorry. Eat me, wall me, candle me, eat me, wall me, wall me, candle me. Ooh. I was watching Dorian Z Drink stream this Sega Saturn port of Symphony of the Night. Pretty cool. We're watching it the other day. I think it's got a lot of similarities, but there are some differences. Differences in the boss fights, I think. Yo, itty. What's up? Cool as a watermelon. What? 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 Do you get stuck? was amazing. It wouldn't be a Castlevania game if it wasn't for the knockback. That's true. <clears throat> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Get out of here. <clears throat> no. 
as soon as Itarama showed up, because he's a pro gamer. I'm not a pro gamer. I'm nervous now. How many people? We got five people watching? Oh my god. There's too many people. Seriously, though, I don't know. There is a little bit of a jankiness going on here. And obviously this is a speed and controls adjustment ROM hack, but I seriously have no idea why we just get bounced around by these enemies. And so earlier we were getting through this like nothing. Hold on. Is my controller plugged in? Is that why? I, I have these issues. <laughs> All eyes on me beat the game or feel the shame. Um, no! Uh... I have this issue with my controller sometimes, where sometimes the inputs, it feels like I'm missing some of the inputs, um, but usually that tells me I need to plug it in. I have that 8-bit dude gamepad, but uh, let's plug this in real quick. If that death happened, it would have been funny, not gonna lie. <laughs> Much better, yeah. See, I knew it. There's this sort of feeling that my controller gives where like, like if I'm hitting the whip like this many times, sometimes a few of those won't register. So I guess that's like the input being eaten up. I always think it's really funny when people say like, it ain't my input, because it just always makes me think of, uh, is it weird science with the robot that needs more input? <laughs> more input. Classic 80s film. Need more input. Ape Do controllers also tend to have the under button rubber wear out quickly, so if you start losing inputs when plugged in. Ah, okay. It may it may be the the rubber needs to be replaced. <clears throat> yeah, you've mentioned that to me before. But I haven't run into it when it's plugged in. Thankfully. And you know, I've had this one <clears throat> since I started the channel. We're approaching on two years now at this point. I do have, so I'm currently using my Super Famicom one, but I do have a Super Nintendo 8-bit 2 controller that's in much better shape. Um, and mainly just because the the rubber after two years has kind of come off on the, uh, the analog sticks. Just on one of them. But generally, they make pretty decent uh, controllers. Yeah, you just get cleaner inputs when things are plugged in, too. Less delay. 8 bit is slightly expensive from what you've seen. Uh, I think mine were $65 each, Canadian. So I don't know what that would be American. Not too bad. I ended up getting them on Amazon. They do make some good controllers, though. And they have a bunch of different options out there, which is kind of neat. Um, however, there are lots of different places that you can go and get customized controllers. I was actually watching a couple of really cool YouTube videos about different controllers that people have had custom made. Let's get fall into the drop, the zombie pit. Um, yeah, different controllers that people have had custom made for Melee. That's the secret. Yeah, it's definitely a rabbit hole you can fall down. <clears throat> Going down the YouTube zombie hole instead of the YouTube rabbit hole. Last night I watched... I think there's only four episodes. The four episodes of Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities on Netflix. It was quite fun. Sort of like uh, Urban Legends retold. It's got a Tales from the Crypt vibe, Twilight Zone vibe. Really cool. Definitely recommend checking it out. 65 Canadian dollars is 47 US dollars. It's not bad. It's cheaper than getting an official controller from uh, most consoles.
but I also got them a little bit cheaper. I think they're normally like $80 Canadian. They're pretty decent though. And there's just something to be said about, I don't know, the Super Nintendo controller is just one of my favorite controllers in general, I think. That and the PS1 controller. Here's a good question of the day. What's your favorite controller? Like, most comfortable controller for any video game system? <laughs> the Atari 2600! Uh, it is pretty cool to note, if you don't already know, most people already know this, but if you have an Atari 2600 or 7800, 5200, and you have a Sega Genesis controller, they use the same controller ports. So you can play an Atari with your Sega Genesis controller, no problem. It works 100% as an input. It's interesting. Can you play the other way around? <laughs> play Sonic with an Atari 2600 joystick? That'd be hilarious. I mean, technically, you couldn't, right? Because you, there's only one button. So you need the jump button and you also need the spin button. Unless you reprogrammed it and had to, like, make it so you spun the joystick to spin. <laughs> I don't even know how you do that, but you rotate the joystick in every direction, counterclockwise. You keep rotating it, and then when you let go, it sends you forward. But then, how would you differentiate that between other movement? I'm just moving left, right, up and down. That's the trick. <laughs> oh, you learned it from ABGN. Yeah, I guess he does feature that in, in a couple videos, too. My cousin had an Atari 5200, but no, uh, not a lot of games like uh, stick out in my mind that I tried out. More memorable to me is the Vectrex. I used to have a Vectrex growing up. It's really cool. These like plastic um, see-through sheets. The games were basically sheets. Like there were cartridges, but there were also just sheets that you would put over the console. The console came with a screen and looked like a little mini arcade cabinet. Had an interesting controller. My uncle had it and just gifted it to us. And there was a game called Cosmic Chase. I used to play a lot. It's from 1978. Believe it or not. <laughs> Ten years before Mario 3. Fifty two hundred, dude. It's been a while since someone ever talked about that. <laughs> There's Atari games all over these lists too, by the way. Uh, Haunted House is a very famous one. Famous Atari game. It's sort of like adventure, like a dungeon crawler. There's ghosts that you're hunting. It's pretty cool. We actually got it in one of our previous episodes. See a few more people diving in. Welcome in. Happy Thursday. Oh. Ugh. We were in Moon Doom mode. Unintentional one hit KO mode. Falls on us. It's actually a pretty tight game, but again, we're playing it with modified controls and speed adjustment. But yeah, you can get pretty precise with a platform. You need to get pretty precise with a platform in this. <laughs> if I beat it, just say I did it deathless. Now, any game I beat on my game list in the Discord, which we added a few to that, it's all understood that I use save states. There's no way. Technically, I am doing a deathless. <laughs> yep. No, I'm just, I'm just having fun with it, and 
really just my interest in level design and game dev in general. And, uh, it's just more intriguing to just have these like little mini experiences with it. But if, if I do really enjoy a game, um, I'll I'll spend some time to to dive into it. For example, ooh, Batman, is that you? We already made this joke, but this is where I killed my saw my parents die over Abba. This is where I killed my parents. Wait, Batman? Did you, you killed your parents? Batman was a Joker this whole time. He just hated opera. His parents always took him to the opera. He's like, nope. Um, a good example of a game that I'm kind of hooked on is Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure, which is a beat em up on the GBA. And I've already beat it on normal mode as Goku, on normal mode as Krillin, and on hard mode as Goku is our current challenge right now. It's very difficult, but it's also a very fun uh, beat em up. It. That was wild. If the game's hard for you and you want to see more, yeah, I mean, it's just a way to explore the game, experience the game. Whoa! Ah, Batman's weak point his left knee. You gotta check it out. If you haven't played Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure, it's one of my favorite beat em ups on the, uh, the GBA. It's really good. Very satisfying to pull off combos, tons of replayability because you can do the campaign as multiple characters, and you can unlock the enemies as playable characters as well. That was one that, th just through the, the randomized retro roulette we discovered, and just kind of got hooked. This is awful. There we go. Okay, invincibility, I don't know what that is, but we have like a special ability. I think it's actually called soul power. Soul weapon. There we go. <laughs> no game's been too hard. These bonehead enemies normally look like, you know, dragon skulls or dinosaur skulls, but they kind of look like birds here. There's like a, an eagle vulture vibe to the way they look. Oh. Yeah, generally a pretty fun game, I have to say. song 100% reminds me of, makes me think of uh, music from Dragon Warrior, like the original. Whew. Yeah, totally. A really good challenging game. It inspires you to, to grind it out a little bit and just get better at it. Um, Batman on the NES is a great example of that. Kabuki Quantum Fighter on the NES is also very similar to Batman, to the Sunsoft game, and I highly recommend checking that out as well. There's a, a stream of me playing Batman for the first time and Kabuki Quantum Fighter for the first time in, in the same go. But yeah, they're both really challenging. They require a lot of precision. However, they don't make me want to give up on them. Some games just don't like you, you don't like them back. <laughs> it's a hate hate relationship. Get oh, get out of here.
It's like Batman, but it's a little bit harder. Yeah, I would say it's, it's probably harder, for sure. They're both quite difficult. But also, it's interesting, because Batman is made by Sunsoft. Kabuki Quantum Fighter is actually made by... HAL Laboratories. And what's really interesting... No, 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 just keep moving. What's really interesting is that the story of Kabuki Quantum Fighter is almost the same story of Assassin's Creed, where somebody is using technology to experience what their ancestor would have experienced in the past. So they connect to their ancestor. Because it actually takes place in the future, and uh, somebody is just playing through or experiencing what it was like to be their ancestor. Which is kind of an interesting uh, take on that. So it's not original in Assassin's Creed, that's for sure. Am I supposed to open this up somehow? It's actually next on your list, there you go. It's into the library. Shit, that was lucky. We have to hit a switch to remove those spikes. Oh no, we don't have to hit a switch, we have to kill this guy. Yeah, the main character of Kabuki Quantum Fighter uses their hair to attack, totally. Slowly opening door looks a bit obnoxious. Oh, the animation of the door opening?
I don't mind. I feel like I had less patience for that when I was younger, but I don't mind uh, stuff like that nowadays. I don't know why. Yes. Oh, are you kidding me? Perfect. Yes. Yeah, totally. It's funny, like, yeah, even just grinding in classic RPGs, I used to just have s such little patience for it as a kid, but... Now I really kind of enjoy the slow grind, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. when you were young, but now you're still impatient, just not the same. There's no, like, hidden wall meat. No, uh, no wall bricks to, to break with the whip in this game. Just accept the loss. Can't say it's deathless. pork in this wall, I would eat it. He's gonna eat the pork from the wall. Let's hope that she doesn't fall. Cinemasker was actually the first channel to use the thumbnail feature. 
Interesting. have to be in one hit KO mode, don't we? Yeah, that's exactly what we wanted. Fuck that. <laughs> Come on. Can you actually dodge it? Okay, only certain platforms will let you fall through. Thanks, dude. No. Ugh. Bats. They are my least favorite enemies in any Castlevania game. They actually behave very differently in this than in the first three on the NES. So I actually kind of prefer them in this than in the original games. They're a little easier to predict and to kind of lead in the direction that you need. Um, Medusas are the ones that people typically always complain about, but I also am not a fan of the... Uh, what are they called now? I always just call them the Humpers. They look like Igor. The little humping enemies. Flea man, that's it. Yeah, flying enemies in general can be pretty tough, for sure. There's a whole uh, series of flying, like, flying Nimbus levels in that Dragon Ball game I was mentioning. Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure. So if you do want to try that one out, just be, be aware that there's a bunch of flying Nimbus levels. Um, they kind of act like, if you've played Turtles in Time, the, the sewer levels, or the sewer surfing level. In that, whenever, wherever you jump, you're still always going to land on the Nimbus, like you'll always land on the, the surfboard. Yes, let's see a few more people are joining in. Sorry, just what? Really? See a few more people are joining in. I hope you're having a, a great Thursday. Welcome in. Welcome in. Lord Loki coming in with that posture check. Thank you so much. And the hydrate. Thank you, thank you. Got a little coffee in me. It is going well. I hope everything's going well with you. This is actually the second time that we uh, have got this game in the the wheel. No, I think I think Loki deserves the hype for sure. jump kind of jankily through these uh, <laughs> jankily jumping 
You can jump jankily through these platforms. It's not that precise. Give me. These, uh, these things here that look like Igor as well, they kind of remind me of the Flea Men. I'm not sure if that's like the interpretation of the Flea Men in, in this game. But I think it's really interesting that, I think Itarama was saying that this game canonically was initially the, for a long time, the, the first retelling, really, or the first Belmont, um, chronologically, to take on Dracula, is Sonya Belmont here. I don't know why we're so hyper fixated on males of the Belmont family taking down Dracula, but she was the OG. Oh, it's like a little enemy gauntlet. It's the Pit of a Hundred Trials. <laughs> Castlevania the Thousand Year Door. Mother of the Belmont clan did it once and then never it said never again. Yeah, it's a pretty cool game. And also what I was gonna say is that you do see similar enemies uh, in this game that you that you see in Castlevania 1 through 3, however, they do behave slightly differently. Usually don't see three stacks of the boneheads. These are different than the flea men, and they behave differently. The bats behave differently, their patterns are all different. The ghosts, if they're anything like the spirit enemy in Castlevania, if that's supposed to be a spirit that's chasing after us diagonally, that's completely different uh, than the pattern that you usually deal with with spirits in Castlevania. I kind of appreciate that they've got different enemy patterns. Oh, come on. Lord Loki the Raccoon God. Yeah, it just makes it a little different. Oh my god, this is annoying. Ugh. Just because we have one health. Fuck off. <laughs> nope. Precision platforming, and look at this, we're, like, ledge grabbing with one pixel. <laughs> oh. See, my gamer brain wants to gravitate us towards having one, <laughs> <clears throat> having only one weapon for some reason, or not one weapon, having uh, <laughs> one hit, only being able to take one hit. All right, that's not the most helpful. have new patterns to learn. It's kind of like uh, Super Mario Land 2. They have some enemies that just have different patterns that you wouldn't have seen in other games. Oh, that's right. That was just a little offshoot hallway.
Get out of here. Be a little, yeah. Be a little, little this. How about that? <laughs> Look, it looks. It's snake, everyone. It's <laughs> snake, snake, snake. Snake Belmont at your service. Off topic, you wish you could record your snake yawning because it's mad cute. <laughs> snake! Super Saiyan. KO Ken! Yep, there we go, that's how we do it. Baby. Vania Gear Solid. It's a ball python? Nice. What's the name of your snake? Shit. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm fucking talking about. Get out of here. These little Ben 10 aliens. That's <laughs> what so they look like. They look like the transformations from that Ben 10 show. Tyson. Nice. Tyson the Python. I also like that uh, Python kind of sounds like if Mike Tyson was saying Python, he's actually saying the word Python, but he's just got the lisp. Python. Don't die. I love the clockwork levels in Castlevania games. This is a little bit of an annoying one. Yep, see, my gamer brain wants me to be at one hit, <laughs> in one hit KO mode, even if it's un unintentional. <laughs> Tython the Python. Two feet, crazy. Your snake's growing two feet? No legs, just feet? That's really weird. It's very strange. <laughs> One of my roommates used to have a snake years ago. Not a ball python, I can't, I can't remember what type of snake I was. <laughs> the Donkey Kong Jr. vibes. You can just tap A and hold left and right to transfer from one chain to another. 100% makes me think of Donkey Kong Jr. I used to play... I used to spend so much... So much time growing up stomping on Koopas in... Donkey Kong Jr. In the original Donkey Kong Jr. Not actual feet. No, I know. I'm just... I'm just joking. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. Hold on. <gasps> Oof. This is not easy.
There's a snake in my boots. That's the most badass thing about Woody from Toy Story. Is there's a snake in his boots and he doesn't give a fuck. He's just like... He's just telling you there's a snake in his boots to show you how badass he is. You don't want to. You don't want to mess with him. That's like um, confronting Gus from Breaking Bad, and he just looks you deep in the eyes, like the main villain, and he just says, "There's a knife in my back," and he just sits down comfortably and stares at you, and you're like, oh, "Don't mess with him. You don't want to mess with him." There's a thing called a legless lizard. Interesting. That's cool. I don't think I've heard of it. <coughs> Excuse me. So it looks like a snake, but it's not a snake. Right? Don't mess with someone with a snake in their boots. Completely looks like a snake except for the face. Interesting. Yeah, because a snake's a snake's head and face are gonna be very different than a lizard's. That's interesting. It doesn't move like a snake. It moves more like a lizard. Yeah, like, it requires a lot of uh, precision platforming, this game, but it's very satisfying to pull off, and, you, and the fact that you can, like, ledge grab and do stuff like this is nice. We just gotta time that properly. This is health. No, it's not. That means this thing's coming back. The fact that if you're just off screen for a second and the enemies respawn just that quickly is a bit rough. The legless lizard moves in a stiffer way than the snake. Interesting. Definitely probably not the place to, to stand. You look like that Plague Knight character from Shovel Knight. Or it looks like it at least. Pretty interesting take on the death fight. Definitely not nearly as difficult as in Castlevania 1. Because there's usually like four sides on sc on screen, while death is jumping back and forth, um, and death jumps back and forth in the original Castlevania one boss fight a lot less often. But you can get pretty accurate with this game. Gonna try and do a boomerang. Sight action here. I got you. 
I see what you're trying to do. This game also, for some reason, isn't displaying the health as a uh, Castlevania game normally would with boss, boss stuff, but it did look like we unlocked ourselves some fire. A fire. Um, I said fire, not spider. Spider. I don't understand how to use a soul weapon, by the way. Does anybody know how? Do you need hearts? Is that a worm? the knockback does not happen when you're on the chains, just like knockback doesn't happen in the first three Castlevania games when you're on the stairs. in this game is great. I think they did a great job. I'm partial to the Game Boy sound chip too. Thank you. 
what? Troll candles. I've never seen an enemy hidden behind a, a candle before in a Castlevania game. <clears throat> What kind of situation is this? Look at that. Can't lead a spider to to wall. Uh. the sweet spot. We don't even have the fully powered up whip at the moment. Just level two. We do so with a sword. Not a thing you normally see. That's health over there, but I'm not gonna go for it. <clears throat> hey, you don't see Medusa with a sword that often, right? Also, a lot of these enemies are unique. Like, there are some that we've seen in Castlevania games before. But most of them are unique. Yeah. 
Good old one hit. Try me. is to clear the room. We just gotta clear the room. Done. is we're supposed to collect all these items, right? We did miss one. Because I think the original story is that you have to collect these items to be able to kill Dracula. Is that the idea? Oh. this is too loud too like at some point I'm sure this Game Boy sound chip will get annoying I can always adjust it It's good. It's really good for for the Game Boy.
Dracula, are you in here? Ah, ah, ah. Nope. I got things backwards, it's Alucard. Sonia, I didn't think it was true, but it is you. Alucard. I could say the same. It is you. <laughs> wow, it is you. I could say the same. It is you. <laughs> How declarative. What are you doing here? Listen to me, Sonia. This is not a place for someone like you. Like me, but what about like you? <laughs> what makes a you? A miserable little pile of not me? Have at you. But Alucard, this problem concerns only you and your father. I've come to fight the lord of this castle. I cannot let my father, Count Dracula, get away with this. I must do this for my mother and for the world that she so dearly loved. Please understand. I'm the only one who can make amends for the sins committed by my father. And there's no reason for you to get involved in this battle. Sonia, I could not bear to lose you too. Now turn back. You... Well, it is you after all. Thank you. You, you're probably right. <laughs> In fact, you have always made the right decisions. I have no intention of going back now. Just as your father was granted strength from the evil deity to conquer the world, I have been granted strength to fight your father. I'll not run away. We will all decide our fate. And it was you who taught me that, Alucard. Alright. Cool. Prepare yourself. in the face with a, a chain whip. It's like, ow. Why? I had no idea you'd become such a bitch. <laughs> the writing in this game, <clears throat> the writing in most Castlevania games, to be perfectly honest, the dialogue in, <laughs> in Castlevania games is not incredible. <laughs> Alucard, I'm so sorry. Do not trouble yourself about it, Sonia. Now I must sleep. Farewell, my beloved, my beautiful vampire hunter. Alucard, I will never forget you. Farewell, dear Alucard. Interesting, so there's like a love story between them. That's new. What is this, Circle of the Moon? Obligatory cavern level. <laughs> what is a man? Might be peak Castlevania writing for sure. needs to be in one hit KO mode. I don't get it. It's completely unintentional.
completely blind jump. Nope, didn't mean to do that. Sort of reminds me a little bit visually of the sort of cavern levels from Super Castlevania 4. It's a werewolf. It's a werewolf. to say which way is the right way.
Fuck off. Don't need to fight these these guys. One second.
it's super sunny here. Super sunny. Now we'll continue to play the game with these uh, Mushroom Kingdom looking castle platforms. They definitely look like uh, toadstools, toadstool bricks. fireballs can actually go through bricks and platforms, so we might as well take that and use it to our advantage. Kind of silly not to. Whoa! There we go. Ugh. Excuse me. Got too close. Shh. 
shoot. My dear nerds. Nerds, 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 nerds. Because it's the nerds of nerds, nerds. How's it going? Whoa. Playing a little CVL on the GB. Playing a little CVL. Castlevania Legends on the old GB. We've actually fought like seven or six bosses so far, I think. Something like that. Hope you're doing well. Can we get a shout out for Henny Blank? Uh, watch it. Yes, Dracula himself. We are right here, folks. You've done well, my girl. In fact, you're the first human who's come this far. Technically, Sonia Belmont is the very first of the Belmont clan that's ever taken on. She started the whole thing, basically. She's Mama Castlevania, Mama Belmont. You are the Prince of Darkness. Because of you, many people have died. Many people have suffered. Oh no, my dear. I have merely done what you humans wished for, fulfilling your insatiable desires. People must fulfill their dreams with their own power. You, who have been consumed by the power of evil, no longer have the strength to determine your own fate. Silence. On the contrary, I am just the one to use this power, and I will be the king who rules over the entire world. Give yourself to me. Oh, that's a little bit... Precarious. My strength will only be used to protect the world. Lord of darkness, prepare to suffer for trifling with so many lives. As you wish, girl. Then it is your fate to kneel before my power. Okay, same boss pattern? No, it's going to be a unique pattern because all the enemies have been super unique in this so far. And of course we have one health, right? <laughs> so funny. Can't. I see. to do that. those ducking skills? You said kneel down before the power.
Sonya is a pretty badass character, I'm not gonna lie. To me, she seems like the most badass of the Belmonts. Based on the, the really shitty dialogue we've heard so far, but the dialogue just in general. It's unfortunate that we can't attack. Ah. It's possible. It's possible. transition <laughs> to the cutscene in boss fights. It's happened with Alucard and someone else as well. Uh, let's do a shout out to Henny. Whew. Yikes. Well, well, you're a worthy foe. You've lasted much longer than most. Prepare yourself. Oh, I've just been doing with you so far, but now it's time to get serious. Oh shit. Interesting second form, very different than Drax's usual second forms. There's no way. It's impossible. It's impossible. We're stuck in this save state. We have to take the death. It's okay. We have one one life left. Yeah, I know. I know. We gotta go all the way from back here, but it's not that far back. Nice. 
Because Drac is just at the very top of this tower here. soldiers. We can avoid them. one of the levels of uh, the whip, which is a little bit unfortunate, but hopefully we'll get it just before the boss fight.
Oh, come on, really? Can't even, can't even land the head if you wanted to, so you just gotta go this way. Yeah, basically. It's Drax Beast form. A little different than Beast Gohan. Screwed. Screwed. Belmont is she supposed to be again? Sonia Belmont. The first one. The OG. No. This is nuts. Welcome in, Double Man. We got a shout out for Double Man FM. Ooh, we're in the final phase of Drax boss fight in this, by the way. First one. Folks, 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 folks. That's it. Will it let me continue? <clears throat> it will. Okay, we're gonna work our way back to it one more time. Why not? This isn't from the beginning, this is just from the beginning of the stage. It's not that long. Keep in mind, as a few people joining, keep in mind that uh, 
This is not just Castlevania Legends. We're playing uh, a mod that someone put together that, it, that changes the speed that we move in, essentially. And adjust the controls a little bit just to make it a little more like the NES Castlevania games. to get through this room. This is a pretty tough room just because we got to deal with this sword thing rushing at us like that. I don't really want to waste our sub-weapon at all. We shouldn't take any hits. If we can go to Dracula with full health, then we're good. as many hearts as possible. <laughs> Heal grabbing? grab with just one heal. It's pretty funny. Sonya has a baby version of the Vampire Killer. No, I just have the second level uh, weapon. I didn't pick up another orb yet to get the third one. I think we might be kind of screwed because I don't think it gives it to you in this stage. But normally you can level up your whip three times in all the Castlevania games. I just happen to have the second one. We're supposed to have a little more reach than this. Is that worth it? I don't know. We haven't gone down. I don't know what's down there, but I don't want to necessarily find out. Let's just fight. The Vampire Damager. Exactly. We're back to the weird pug bat skeleton. Tracks ultimate form.
pretty bomb ass remix of Vampire Killer. Oh, totally. I was saying that the the soundtrack to this game is quite amazing. They did a great job. I mean, it's 1997 on the Game Boy, so I think the Game Boy Color was already out at this point. So they probably had a decent amount of experience working with the sound chip already. Kinda sucks having the the second level weapon. It is a really cool ring, so. that sweet spot right there, that ledge. Come on, come on. Just getting slippery at the end here. Yeah, the ledge is a sweet spot. granted such a precious sort, short life in comparison to yours, but in that short time, we're able to love and to live for someone else. There must have been a time when you two cherished the bonds with the ones you loved. We humans are not so foolish as to throw away all of that in exchange for the power you received. There is no place in this world for the likes of you. You were already defeated when you accepted the power of the darkness. Yeah, the artwork is very, uh, very anime. You know, um, we were surmising that this came out the same year as Symphony of the Night. Or the year after. Because this came out in 1997. Don't let it go to your head, girl. Do you really think the likes of you can destroy me? You're a fool, just as Alucard was. Listen to me. Darkness will never die out as long as there is light in the world, and I am the ruler of that darkness, and I will rise again and again, as long as people like you are alive. Again and again, I tell you. <laughs> when that happens, someone will appear before you to take my place. If it is my fate to again be a vampire hunter, I will be ready. No, I will gladly accept that destiny. So until your soul is saved, until all the evil desires in the world are exhausted, goodbye. Goodbye, a woeful prince of darkness. <sighs> the very first fall of Dracula's castle. The hands of a Belmont. 
It's not canon, but still. Thus, the fear of darkness that continued to envelop the world was lifted single-handedly by a young girl. Will Dracula rise again? Is every descendant of Sonia Belmont doomed and destined to fight Dracula over and over again? Find out next time on the next episode of Yo, zombie paper, welcome in. Dude. We're gonna spin that wheel, of course. I think I disappeared there. Sorry. We're going to spin the wheel now that we beat Castlevania Legends, and we are going to have it land on game number one in the beginning of the list, so that's pretty funny. Game number one is a ROM hack of Excite Bike on the NES called Skeleton Bike. So Skeleton Bike up next. A complete tonal shift or whiplash, whatever you want to call it. That's what I love about these retro roulette streams. Stick around and don't bring your bones anywhere other than here. Keep your bones here for Skeleton Bike. transition. Double audio, single audio, triple audio, quadruple audio.
Welcome back, Collector. See you in a bit, Henny. And Scooty, have a good walk. <laughs> if you didn't see the title of the screen, that's how you know what's coming up next. Now here's a fantastic question of the day. Feel free to let me know in the chat or in the YouTube comments if you're watching afterwards. Excitebike had a track creation mode. What are some of your favorite retro games or what is your favorite retro game that had a level design or a level creation or level editor built in? I know Fire and Ice on the NES had a built-in level editor. Excitebike. What about on Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis? Is there a game that lets you, or comes with a, a level editor that you really like? I used to like Worms too. Editing the levels and creating new terrain to fight on was always fun. Let me know in the comments.
Duke Nukem 3D had level editors built in. That's cool. Did Doom or Doom 2 ever have a level editor built in? Or did you have to like download that? Is that like a, a moddable thing? <laughs> Tonal shift, let's go. Party editors for Doom, but nothing built in. Nice. Look at the little skeleton. What the? I'm lost. Are we supposed to not see what's coming up? see what's coming up. Duke and the other build games like Blood and Shadow Warrior had really nice 3D level editors. Nice. Blood had one too. Nice. Saw a stream of that recently. What is going on here? I can't see what's... Like, are we even interacting with stuff? and you have a bad ROM dump. Oh, God, it smells in here. Who took a bad ROM dump in here? Look, look. Open a window. Yeah, yeah, we're, we, we did interact with that giant, that giant, like, cliff there. But it's happening before... Yeah, exactly, it's happening before we see it, so it's not in real time with what we're seeing. So it's just really hard to keep track of it. So it's not that we're passing through it, it's just that, like, the visuals of what we're seeing are, like, delayed somehow. from Castlevania to this. From Drat to Whack. A retro story.
It's a shame. Because otherwise, it's not like it's terrible. <clears throat> Forty-two seconds. <clears throat> Do you remember when uh, the Wii came out and they did an excite excite truck? <clears throat> Try to continue this series with uh, with Excite Truck. Did anyone play Excite Truck? Does anyone have Excite Truck? Did anyone buy Excite Truck and not trade it back in immediately? <laughs> I just remember seeing tons of copies at my local game store. Spinning that wheel, spinning that wheel. And it's landing on game number 480. So let's go. Take a look at what that is. Four eighty. Not sure if we played this one before, but this is Dead Moon on the PC engine. The Turbo Graphics 16. So Dead Moon. I, th I think we might have played this one. Let me just double check quickly. Because I try not to do repeats. Yes, we have played it. We have played it. Let's spin the wheel <clears throat> again and see what we get. Excite Truck was supposedly good. You got a copy of it at some point, but you haven't really played it. 486. 486 is... Dark Forest, which is a 2000 and 11 ROM hack of Super Mario World. Let's take a look. Stick around.
So there's actually two hacks uh, called Dark Forest, one from 2011 by Mr. Deppelman, which is the one that we got here, and we also have one from 2019 by some completely different, same name though, different hacks. Created the hack 2011. Dunklerwald. Always go with the third save state. Let me know if it's too loud game wise. I'm just going to give it a little more audio here. And thanks again to everyone who's hanging out. Remember that you can spin the wheel anytime you like. Interesting. Interesting way to start. Woo! <laughs> German. Spooky. Yep, anything that's any German. Any German ROM hack is in this list just because it's German, no. Um, that's silly. It's because it's Dark Forest. We have one called Haunted Forest, Haunted Woods, Terrifying Woods, you know, a lot of like kind of mundane names to be honest, but some pretty cool hacks. Already I like this. This is not a Kaizo hack, but it's just uh, requiring some good maneuvering. Whoop. is pretty cool so far. <clears throat> We've played a lot worse in terms of ROM hacks. Oop. Yeah, it is a good use of the grade, actually. You don't see that that often. Just something that you can grab onto. Like, even like that. <laughs> oh, shit. They respawn. <laughs> That's pretty funny, though. Nope. Oh. <gasps> oh, you gotta be small be small to be able to grab the grate. <sighs> this is wild. I like this. Good design. You let the shells take each other out. Yeah, this is a, a well designed level. Oh, <laughs> They replaced our good friend the watermelon block with just a ground tile that does the same thing. If you're one of our tier 1 subscribers, feel free to drop the watermelon block in there. Or if you have channel points, you can make your own version of the watermelon block emo, like Itarama had earlier <clears throat> with the sunglasses. <clears throat> well, that sucks. Oh, no. 
This is cool. <clears throat> the grate in uh, this type of level is, is great. That's really cool that that actually worked. That's a really cool placement of uh, a vertical block. Never seen anything like that. And now we're in a Mario Maker level. <laughs> Feels like it, at least. Uh, no. <clears throat> it didn't work without a watermelon block. They just changed the graphic of the watermelon block to look like a diagonal extension of the ground, the dirt, so that it looks like you're just running up the wall. That still was a watermelon block, so if we were on Yoshi, for example, and we jumped on that little piece of earth that was in the corner, uh, we would have bounced off it just like we do with a watermelon block. I guess that's just your only way up. Oh, I gotcha. That's dumb. <clears throat> I was gonna say, am I supposed to care <laughs> about what just happened there? It was just such a useless, uh, switch moment unless we need the p-switch like way over here oh, look at this Thank God for safe states. Fuck off. Yes. Somehow we were able to save ourselves. I have no idea how that happened, folks. It's okay. It's okay. It's still good. Ugh. You just gotta 
commit. my controller automatically moving to the left that doesn't make sense oh great oh no I knew it I I just reflexed and saved. Oh. <laughs> See, I like this. This isn't really, this doesn't feel like a Kaizo hack to me. It just feels like a challenge. <laughs> Damn. Okay, at least you can start from here. See, and this is the coolest thing, so that just happens to be a watermelon block. But just the fact that you can hop onto it and then jump off is really cool. That's neat. we need the, the spring so all that hubbub was for nothing Oof. <laughs> that first Monty Mole The accuracy of jumping off vines has always been tough for me in Super Mario World. Oh. Holy shit! 
That was absolutely wild. scroll me. Fuck you. Fuck you. We're not holding on to the mushroom, folks. That was extremely lucky. <gasps> what kind of obstacle course nonsense is this? Holy... This is extremely, extremely nerve-wracking. Oh my god. Oh no! Is the, that is hell, folks. <laughs> There's no way. No matter how hard we try, yeah. Absolutely not. We're spinning that wheel. Holy. Dunkler walled indeed. We got Dunklered. We're spinning the wheel and it's landing on game number 181. is simply a game on the Atari 2600 called Halloween. Stick around.
There we go. <clears throat> we may just need to set up the controls. Okay, you should be able to see it and hear it, and we should be able to dive in, right? Or do our controls just not work all of a sudden? So done. Okay, let me just reset this again. Okay, it should work now. Yep. Here we go. Oh, holy shit. So just right away, it's like clock tower. We just gotta run. Head cut off twice. Let's be careful. <clears throat> Can I just save it? You can't save one of the kids. again. Oh, I see. I can hold the button and take the kid with us. It's very odd. A lot of these old Atari games require you to explore. Hmm. 
<laughs> Do the old deke. Oh, that sucks. Sure, I understand how we're supposed to protect these kids. Is this an official game? Or do you think this is fan made? I mean, it's not that dissimilar to Clock Tower, which we've played before last Halloween. It's official. There's obviously something that we're missing because there's not that many buttons in. Like there's just the joystick and the, the one button. So I'm not quite sure what we have to do. In games like Adventure and Haunted House, which we've played before. Oh, look at that. There's a weapon. I was just about to say, there's usually an item we have to get. Hmm. Hmm. No! Go back to the pink room. I guess it makes sense that Michael would just pop out of nowhere. How do we save them? couldn't point forward like that before. But once we get the sword, we can point forward. That's a really hilarious sprite. Excuse me. Uh, Hawk, excuse me. Should be a little easy now, right? Or do I have to get a series of items? Okay, 
It's not a loop, not an endless loop. I like the pumpkin sprite at the top. too yeah okay there's not much we can do then I think the only place we haven't gone was through this one door all of a sudden. Are we supposed to bring the kids to specific spots? Oh, come on. We keep pressing up. No. What's happening here, folks? There we go. Supposed to bring the kids over there. I got you. <clears throat> Gotta wrangle those survivors, basically. It's only a couple of years away. It might be safer to do this. Ah, keep getting back caught in the, the door loop.
can take the the kids from the top to the bottom level, but you can definitely just bring them to the same screen and you're fine. See, look at that. We didn't need a tutorial. It didn't take us that long to figure it out. Didn't need a 14-page tutorial. Oh, they just show up at random. What are you trying to do here? This is my favorite video game that Jamie Lee Curtis is in. <gasps> Oops. from the other side. Never, never letting the song get into itself. like it's sophisticated. Oh. Can we get that? Can we get that? Follow me. Oh no, that, we had a chance. We had a chance to save that kid. <laughs> I 
don't understand why sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Oh, dude, 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 get out of here. Welcome back, we're playing Halloween and saving kids or uh, dragging surviving characters to the left of the screen to get points. This is literally all this game is. And yes, we are playing as Jamie Lee Curtis. Fortnite is not the only game you can play as Jamie Lee Curtis. No, I'm kidding. You can't play as Jamie Lee Curtis in Fortnite, but that would be hilarious. <laughs> Freaky Fortnite. Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lone. Hank and fruit. <laughs> ah. This is, yeah. It's a very simple game, but it's also terrifying, and it feels like the prototype to Clock Tower, if you've played Clock Tower before. Where you're just wa you're wandering through like a mansion, and you're avoiding the murderer who could show up at any time, and you're trying to either piece things together or save <laughs> your head from being cut off because that's literally what's happening in this game. Or save the other characters. Oh my god. Yes, there we go. Come on, little Dobby the house elf. No. No. Oh. I gotcha. It's because we had that item equipped. We had a different item equipped. There we go. We picked up that, like, crowbar slash hammer on the bottom floor. There we go. 12150. <clears throat> there it is. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but it looks like we got our head cut off. Yes. We stabbed him. It wasn't a hammer, it was a sword. Fighting bad guys with swords. There we go, 14850. <laughs> That's it. That's what happens when you get game over. Colors change. And then you can press uh, the reset button, because the Atari 2600 has the reset button, it has the one button you press. I think it might have actually two buttons. And the joystick. Are we gonna spin the wheel or are we gonna try again to beat our score? Are we gonna spin the wheel or are we gonna try again? I think we're gonna spin that wheel. Boom. Let's see what game is next. Game 568. Interesting. Game 568, we're back to Castlevania, and it is Castlevania 1 on the NES with improved controls, which is interesting because we started off the stream and we played Castlevania Legends on the Game Boy, which also had improved controls and tightened um, and improved speed as well and precision. It just, just controlled a little bit differently than the original ones, so this is the same thing, but for Castlevania 1 on the NES. I believe Castlevania Legends is the first Game Boy Castlevania game, but I could be wrong. It might be the adventure, actually. Because I feel like that game was pretty rudimentary, and the one we played and beat today 
it had a little more going on for it with uh, the music and the it seemed a little more refined. So here we go. We're gonna dive into Castlevania with improved controls on the NES. Up next. All right. Let's just see how improved these controls are. <laughs> I 
Make sure my controller's plugged in, of course. Mm. Can you do smaller, tight jumps? Tighter jumps? Maybe that's it, yeah. Maybe you can do, like, tighter jumps. You can't usually do this this quickly. Yeah, it feels a little bit smoother. It's really just the transition between switching directions and, like, controlling your direction when you jump. Yeah, like, you can do this pretty quickly, actually, in comparison to the original. This is kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I, I've played a couple of mods of Super Castlevania 4, the bloodletting mod and the coffee mod, and what it does is it actually reduces the amount of frames that you need to wait between using your sub-weapons. So it, once you have multiple sub-weapons, like multiple axes, or multiple cross sub-weapons, or holy water, then you can basically spam it a lot easier. So it's, it kind of feels like they've done that here. Certainly an interesting take. Castlevania 3 was the first one I ever played, but then very quickly after, I got myself a copy of this. I've never played Castlevania 2. I don't know how interested I am in playing it. Wall meat. Just because I'm not really into like that or Zelda 2. I did play a little bit of a Zelda 2 ROM hack as part of this series. neat. There's just a little bit more precision here. I think for boss fights, it may, this that's where this uh, this hack is going to shine. You got Castlevania 1 and 2 at the same time. Nice. What was your immediate uh, reaction to playing both of them? Because they're drastically different games. Drac-stickly different games. Ah, 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 ah. See what I did there. Sorry for the Vlad joke. Ha ha ha. What? That helps. Really? I thought it would be helpful in a boss fight, but I guess it's not. Not particularly any more than anything else. You like them both a lot, but no chance to be disappointed by two being different. 
Apparently there's a really cool Castlevania 2 randomizer. You can play as like Samus or Link. A whole bunch of characters. It could be fun or horrible. Yeah, exactly. The Dracula 3, um, or Dracula 3, Dracula's Curse, Castlevania 3 randomizer is pretty fun. It just shuffles the levels, the partner character that you start with, the weapons, and the enemies, and the music. Wow, that was rough. That was a really rough attempt at that first boss. Yikes. It also randomizes some of the paths on the, the map, so... Very commonly you can get caught in a loop, and you can't actually get to Dracula. That's Dracula's Curse. Turns out the Dracula's Curse was the... the randomizer loop that we met along the way. The real Dracula's Curse was the randomizer loop that we met along the way. There we go. Yep, this is definitely tighter. For moments like that, platforming moments, the controls are definitely improved. I'd like to see a Castlevania 1 randomizer, I haven't seen that. Yeah, I feel like the jumping is definitely improved, for sure. Spirit behind me. Nice, Nigel, welcome in. Can we get a shout out for Nigel? While we huck this holy water forward. Bye bye. Much easier. What are the improved controls? Uh, it seems to be a lot easier to do short jumps. Uh, there's like short jumps, middle jumps, and taller jumps. You can't jump higher, but it just uh, seems to be a lot easier to precisely do a really quick tap to get a, a hop. Like, 
see it, it feels like there's like less delay and I have a little more control over Simon while I'm midair. It feels a little different. Usually there's this sort of slower, like this kind of a vibe going on, right? <laughs> That's when I hold A, but I can actually, I can almost move like the flea men in this level. And it seems you can also do this as well. I think the main thing is that they've they've cut down on the uh, or they've reduced the amount of frames that you have to wait between actions and stuff. It's actually quite nice. It's really subtle, actually. Good to have the holy water here. So we can just do that. We played Castlevania Legends and beat it uh, on the Game Boy earlier. But yeah, I hope you're doing well. Hope your Halloween week is, is going well as well. You know, I talk about how Super Mario Bros. 3 is one of my favorite games, but I feel like I've played this game so many times that this is like, this would be a rivaling position. For the top spot, you know? Castlevania 1. I love Castlevania 3. It's an excellent game. But I've just played this game so many times and I feel like I just know it like the back of my hand and I also really enjoy playing it every time. You've probably seen me play like so many, so many versions of Castlevania 1 on stream. More so than other Castlevania games. If we were to like lay, lay out all the streams and see what was what. I feel like we can spam the, the whip a little faster than usual. <clears throat> it might just be super slight, like we can get five hits in in the time that it normally would take you to get four, four hits in. love this moment where the actual castle itself flips you the bird, tells you to fuck off. <laughs> right here. You think that's where Drax sleeps? In the middle finger? No, because it's too exposed to sunlight. Be so dangerous, but you know, we do encounter Dracula at the top of the castle. It doesn't really make sense. He's not a princess being held captive. He probably should be at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, it's like this moment is <laughs> stage nine. Drac is like, just get out of here. <laughs> oh, wow. Nope. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the reminder, Collector. <laughs> I wanna be... there we go. Oh, 
<laughs> so close. <laughs> kind of like that zombie pit in Castlevania Legends. You got this boss the other night without getting hit. Never done that before. Oh, crazy. This one. The... The mummies. The double mummies. There are some sweet spots that you can stand in, right? It's, it's pretty... Like there's some moments. Oh, I... You know what's funny? I just realized that's what Circle of the Moon is throwing back to at the beginning. The whole falling to the bottom and starting your adventure. It's a throwback to this. And we had a, a falling down a pit moment with Castlevania Legends as well. I feel like the, the volume is off. Is What's the volume situation like right now? I feel like I'm too loud. Somehow. You tell me. I feel like that's a bit better. Maybe. Maybe the game is too loud. Hmm, I'm not seeing it on my end. Weird. Symphony of the Night has the Pit 2 and I'm pretty sure Chronicles. I mean, it is a pretty classic horror element. If we're not talking about the horror monsters. You know, a dark pit that falls into nothing. Pretty terrifying. If I'm dropping frames, I'm not seeing it on my end, but try refreshing. Sometimes that helps. Oh. Easier to avoid items we don't want to. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I don't know. It's a bit better. That's good. Oh. Again, we're playing in un unintentional moon doom mode. Where, uh... You can't even take one hit. Thank you. 
This is one of my least favorite bosses. <clears throat> I guess it's not as bad if we have the holy water. Different song. too much into the music. sort of walk off screen. You freck him out. Oh, sometimes you can. Forget that. Lab level. <clears throat> oh, 
was working in a lab late one night. feeling. Something was going on, something was glitching. Absolutely accept that. This is not gonna be a fun fight right here. With this health. Very different than the death fight we had earlier on in the stream. With legends. Oh, that was the way to go. Come on. 
Come on. That's what I'm talking about. We have to be able to make moves that take out multiple sides at once. You know, they do say sides doesn't matter, but sides does matter. We just gotta do this slow and steady. Such an awful boss fight.
come on. The accuracy. So close. Fuck that, wherever it spawns. It always spawns just above me, so it doesn't matter. That's so dumb. Death will be the death of me, let me tell you. <laughs> That's right. Ow, ow, my brain hurts after doing that boss fight. Now we gotta take on the bats. <laughs> we 
kind of screwed up because we had the third level cross already. Picked up that dagger. It was a mistake. Another mistake. Hey, Drac. Sup, Drac? Sup, Drac? What's up, Drac? chat, so one sec. attack quick enough. Come on, <laughs> come on. That's so ridiculous. That's a nice little bonus. And we kind of blew it. We got hearts and something else. There we go.
A little different than his uh, pug face form in <laughs> Castlevania Legends. Improved controls helped. The small jump. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> it's like, not now. Not now. Two extra lives in the meantime, and there it is. Castlevania 1 destroyed. I think we beat it pretty quickly, actually. Fair, fairly quickly. All things considered. And that's Castlevania 1, another completed run of it. In fact, I don't think we've actually had a completed run of this until very, very recently. We did a run of it which had a completely different color palette, but Castlevania 1, we've played multiple different versions of it. And I think we only ever completed one run of it. Uh, but we've gotten to the Dracula boss fight so many times, and somebody spun the wheel in the retro roulette right when we were about to kill Dracula, so it never counted as a full playthrough. But I think this is the, the second time that we've run through it. It does have improved controls, so I was able to jump a little quicker, jump a little more accurately. And Mighty Collector, I'll send this to you as well. Send you a message on Discord. If you're not a member of Discord, feel free to join. Of the two Belmond heroes, Belmondo heroes that we uh, played as today, I think Sonya was the coolest. Double Castlevania. Now, what do we do? Do we take on the second quest? We've never taken on the second quest before. Uh, we attempted a little bit of it, because I discovered it on stream, I didn't realize there was a second quest to this game, and basically what it is, is it makes you loop back through, <laughs> great, it makes you loop back through the game with more bats and more medusas, because really that's what I understood it to do. Really, we gotta do this again? How uncool is that? Actually save it.
I'm getting my COVID booster in a bit. Here. In a couple hours. So I think I might actually just raid somebody. But I want to say thanks to everyone who's been hanging out. It was super fun. We beat Castlevania Legends on the Game Boy. We beat uh, Castlevania with improved controls on the NES. Thank you to creative username 999 for the recent follow and Rush Pirate for the recent shoutout. And also thanks to Narcolepsy for the raid and Commander Gray Fox for the follow. If you're watching on YouTube, this is episode 45, I believe. 44 of our spooky horror and Halloween themed retro roulette. If you're not a member of the Discord, feel free to join, and I will see you in the next part, which will be tomorrow at about 10 a.m. Pacific when we dive into the next episode for more Halloween week. And we are going to raid Tsunati. I will see you in Sonati's chat, and I will see you in the Discord, and tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thanks again, everyone.